So from the last video, we have these new linker errors, no longer a QT problem, but instead our problem where it can't find our clock code to make this work. And so notice the linker is no longer complaining about the the QT functions. It's happy now. But, but over in our test here, we're calling uh, the constructor for clock here. We're calling new frame. And the, the compiler can see it. If I click on clock here and we pound include clock h and I can open that document and this is the file we created and the compiler can see yeah you got a clock clash, you got initialized, you got shut down, you got new frame, all that. You don't have them defined anywhere. Okay, we defined them over here but we've just declared them over here so the compiler was happy and compiled this code and said yeah I can call new frame for you. The linker will come back and patch that up later. Well when the linker came up, came in after the compiler, the linker says okay new frame you're invoking that I need to patch up where that address is actually go address will actually go. I need to basically put a call instruction there to the actual address to where the code begins. Alright? This is code. This is not code. This is code. This is not code. Okay, well it is code, but th these are declarations. I can't execute this. Alright? This just says what I can do. It doesn't say how I can do it. And when I say new frame, the, compi the link, the compiler is happy and says, okay, well I know that you can do a new frame because you said you can, but then the linker says, okay, I'm responsible for saying how we're going to do this. Well, where's the how? And you may think, well, the how's right over here. Why, why can't the linker find it? That's kind of weird. And the reason is, is because the all all these definitions are compiled in the engine project. All right, we're trying to access them from the engine tester project. All right, they're compiled here, but we're trying to access them here. And so the linker's choking and saying, um, um, I, I, I can't see these. Okay, well, you may think, Jamie, um, we did the same thing with the math. We, we made these vectors and we were able to test them over here and we were able to use them over here to get the, get the ship to move. Well, that's true, except there's a huge difference between what we did with the vector stuff and what we did with the clock stuff. If you look... The vector has a header file and an inline file, which we included into the header file. So all the vector class has is a header file. Whereas the clock class actually has a compilation unit. This is compiled. And, and so when we uh, pound include our vector, either here or here, since these, the code for the vector is included when we pound include it, it's literally pasted into the file that we include it into. So if I go back to vector 2D tests, when I, when I pound include vector 2D, that pretty much copies and pastes all this code directly into that file. But then this pound include additionally copies and pastes this code into that file. Now why did we do it that way? Well, remember, we wanted to do inlines, and in order to inline code, the compiler needs to be able to see it. The compiler literally embeds those instructions directly at the call site. So that's why we weren't getting compile or linker errors with the vector class, because the definitions are right there. The compiler can see them and use them directly. Whereas with this clock class, we finally made a compilation unit, which somewhat hides it away. It tucks it into this DLL, if you remember the engine project here, we told it to compile. We said, hey, make a DLL, not an EXE. I want a dynamic link library so I can consume your functions. Well, we didn't expose the clock functions outside that DLL. Thus, the linker in the engine tester project is now choking. If I hit control B, it's like, I, I, don't, I don't know where this code is. You said it's going to be there, but I don't know where it, where it is. So, key terminology, we need to export this functionality from our DLL. And before I do that, I actually want to, let's bring this up here. Uh, no, 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 not this one. Let's bring, let's bring the engine project folder here. And here's debug. And what, what, what's engine outputting here? Do you see engine outputting anything? All right, here's the engine debug folder, and when we build the engine project, it should show up here. Okay, why, why is nothing showing up? Let's, let's go here, I'm going to right-click here and say, project only, I want to build only the engine. Build succeeded, I should get a DLL file. Let's see if we can investigate why that doesn't show up. I'm going to go to properties of engine. Output directory is the problem. 
Solutioner. Be careful when you see Solutioner macro. What is the current solution? The current solution, well, right now the current solution is Sandbox Game. All right, and depending on which solution I'm hosting these projects in, this solution dir will change, which we don't want. We don't want that behavior. We want the engine to build the here. So if I go to project files and sandbox game and in its debug, we see we get engine DLL, and and that's it. So so I, I first things first. I want I want to fix engine so it builds to its debug directory. So right click here, properties. Wait, not on the solution. Right click on the engine prop. Properties, output dir. I'm going to say project dir here. Project dir. I'm just doing this because I want a clean separation between these projects. Now let's build. Build succeeded, and now we get the engine DLL. Well, remember, if you recall, hopefully, when it comes to linking and running, there's lib files. And there's DLL files. All right, DLL is short for Dynamic Link Library. Uh, again, the reason why we use Dynamic Link Libraries is it's, it's dynamically linked, which means it's linked at runtime. But still, at compile time, the compiler needs some place to link to, even though that link area will be patched up at runtime. And that's what the lib file's job is. The linker looks at the lib, and the lib says, hey, you'll get this. But we'll patch it. Up. We'll get this address for this function, for example, new frame. But we'll patch that up at runtime. So we could change this DLL all we want without having to recompile anything that's linked to our lib file. That's quite nice. But we need a lib file in order to link to. Well, if you notice, we, all we got from our engine project was a DLL file. Where is the lib file? Well, C++ compiler for the engine project bothered, didn't bother to create one because we're not exporting anything from our functions or not our functions, we're not exporting anything from our DLL quite yet. So let's do that. Let me show you how to how to export here. I'm going to go here. Well, actually, we'll do that in the next video. This gets a little tricky, so I think I think the next video is a good place to pick up this this exporting and importing from DLLs.